sure it is a glorious day. Another day that you have made, and we'll be glad and rejoice in it. We have coming up a day of remembrance. With heavy hearts, we remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice for this nation that we might have the freedom in this time and this place to lift up the name of Jesus so that the whole world may know that we follow him. And Lord, let us be ever mindful of the sacrifices they made and the pain caused to their families for those sacrifices. But those sacrifices were not as you. They were men who is, King Solomon said, all men sin. But you, Father, didn't sin. Jesus didn't sin. But for our sakes, he died because he loved us. It's these men died because they love us in this nation. But he rose Amen. and gave us the promise of the resurrection, and we thank you for that. Father, I personally thank you for allowing me to be a member of this assembly so full of believing Christians who have offered up faithful prayers for my wife and my family. Lord, we know is not our righteousness that makes those prayers answered, but your faithfulness and your goodness that you keep all of your promises. Lord, I ask you to bless this assembly, this congregation. Bless all those throughout the world who are really honestly, sincerely lifting up the name of Jesus and teaching his ways. For his ways are righteous. His way is love. His way is forgiveness and grace. Help us to show those qualities to our brothers and sisters in Christ, the lost world around us in our communities and in our nation. Lord, I pray for the upcoming events of our church, the school out celebration Wednesday night, the Bible school coming up in a couple of weeks. Let those things help this church to grow by service and in numbers. I pray for the young people who will be involved in feuds. Let them grow to be more mature Christians as a, as a result of this. Bless those who are involved in leadership roles in these endeavors. Bless our pastor this morning, Father, as he boldly brings your message. Give him courage, give him strength, give him wisdom that we may be blessed by your word, as we always are. Bless these people who are lifting up praises and leading us as we sing to you, Father, for your goodness and your glory and your might. May we always trust in you and let that trust grow stronger every day. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Brother Lyle. Uh, you may be seated. Uh, thank you.
you for coming this morning to Westside. We're glad that you're here. If you're watching online with us, uh, follow along, or you're here in person, uh, we're glad that you're here at Westside. Um, if you're a visitor with us again today, all we want to ask of you today is if you'll, in the bulletin, there's a, a tear out sheet there. If you'll just fill out your family information there and just drop that on the offering plate at the end of the service, that'll be like your gift to us. I promise we won't send the SWAT team out to your house and visit you and all that, but unless you want that, you can, there's a box that you can check that. Yes, come visit. So, but um, we're glad you're here. Uh, also, more, most importantly, on that tear out sheet on the bulletin is a place for prayer requests. And I, we take that seriously here at Westside. Uh, we pray with those every week. And uh, we'll, we'll put those on our prayer sheet uh, midweek on Wednesdays. So if, the, if members or guests, you guys have anything you want us to pray for you about, just feel free to write that down, put that in and drop it in the offering plate and, and we will pray for that. I, I promise you that. So, uh, But anyway, this is our time where we kind of greet and just uh, say hello to each other, take a few minutes to do that and uh, just we'll do that. We'll come back and uh, have a quick message from our uh, children's uh, director, I don't know what you are, a WANA director, and uh, do that in a minute, and then we'll we'll talk about Memorial Day here in just a minute. But we're glad you're here this morning. If y'all would take a few minutes and just uh, fist bump each other, uh, kick each other in the shin, whatever you like to do. <laughs> so let's greet. No, we do it like this. Zachary. Appreciate it. All right, as you're making your way back to your seat, do something a little bit different this morning uh, than a specific devotion. I want to I want to encourage someone this morning. Uh, before I do, though, I want to read, uh, reading from the 119th Psalm, verses 9 through 16. And it reads, How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word, I seek you with all my heart and do not, do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that, came from my, that come, from my, come from your mouth. 
I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. And um, it's been a privilege this year to kind of take back over the role of, of leading our kids' ministry on Wednesday nights and, and doing that through Awana. And it, it's been a great pleasure, and I've enjoyed every one of the kids that's been involved. Uh, some are church kids, if you will, church family kids that come on Wednesday night, and then some are not. Um, but we have one that is a fifth grader that will be moving to the youth group. And, and David, come on up here real quick for me, buddy. And David uh, actually has already kind of started, I think last summer he was uh, in the youth group or would be there on Wednesday nights. But then on Sunday mornings in Sunday school, he's joined them too uh, uh, the past few months. But David, I've got something I want to give you this morning. And this is it's a student version. This is no longer a kid's version of the Bible. So this is for you as you kind of step into the youth group in the next few months. Um, and I just want to encourage you with it this day. And I put your name in. It's got your name. This is yours. Uh, and it's our gift to you from your Awana leaders, from your kids' ministry leaders. And uh, I just want to encourage you with that verse. And, and it says, how can a young man keep his way pure by living according to your word? And, and that's really what the whole 119th Psalm is about to all of us. Not for just for David. Not even just for kids. There's such good stuff in that, in that psalm. I mean, there's just chock full of memory verses that you can hide in your heart to use. And David, I just want to encourage you. I want to encourage you like, and I was watching Pastor John last week. Were you here last Sunday morning? Did you, did you see Jakai up here, the big tall guy? Yeah, and, and Pastor John was encouraging him in his word. And now he really was a student of the Bible. And that's what I want to encourage you with. And if you got a Bible home, that's fine. But I wanted to give you one. This is a gift to you as you kind of step out into the youth group. And um, just want to thank you for what you've been. He's a baptized believer. If you've been in the church, you've watched him and his brother both be baptized. He got to be baptized with his brother Michael. And that was an encouraging day. And his mom, Miss Linda, and his little brother, John. But uh, I want the Lord to continue to work in your heart and life. I know he's got a great plan for you, David. Um, and uh, I, just, I just appreciate him. He's quiet like me. I grew up very quiet, and that's okay. Uh, it's good to be quiet sometimes. That usually means you're a pretty good listener. So uh, y'all give David a hand as he steps out into our YouTube. And I'm going to pray. Father God, thank you so much for just an opportunity to work with children and kids um, and so many leaders, uh, you know, there's so many involved in that, different leaders and volunteers that help them, whether that's just be to share a snack, share a conversation, to help memorize the Bible, to play a game with, or whatever it is, Lord God. Yeah. Just thank you for that opportunity to minister to our kids in this church and this community. Uh, we look forward to what you're going to do through Vacation Bible School and even into the fall, Lord, and, and just the plans you have set forth for us. We'll look forward and expect great things, Lord. And, and Lord, I do want to pray for David this morning, Lord, as he goes into middle school and now middle school can be different for us. And, and I lift him up to you. I lift up his brother Michael to you, Lord, as he's going to be a, an eighth grade, Lord. Bless him. Bless his little brother, John. And I specifically pray for Miss Linda, too. And, and as she takes care of her boys and and, 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 and just wants the best for them. Lord, bless her. Uh, guide her, direct her, and, and give her everything that she needs. Uh, and just uh, guide her and take care of her, Lord. We're thankful for the Coker family and just bless them. Thank you specifically for David, Lord. Bless him in a mighty way, Lord. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Bobby. That was, that was great. That was good stuff right there. All right. Um, well, this is Memorial Day weekend, and uh, this is the time we honor. You see the flags that we have in the sanctuary and outside as you came in. It's just a, it's a great way to honor and to remember uh, those who have paid the ultimate price uh, for our freedom here in America and have given their life uh, in service to our country, uh, to our nation. So, um you know, there's a, there's a difference there. Sometimes people get confused between uh, Veterans Day and Memorial Day. Veterans is, is for those who have served, all, all who have served. Memorial Day, those who have served, but they have given the ultimate price and they've given their life, and that's what we do to remember them. Um, what I'd like to do now is, is if you have a family member or a close friend who has given the ultimate 
gift of their life and they've lost their life in uh, ser while serving in the military, if you would stand for them, if, if you would just honor them. Thank you very much. You may, you may be seated. So let, let that be a, a, a remember a remembrance uh, for all of us, uh, for those that feel that calling to, to serve and to protect um, uh, as well. So at this time, I'd like to ask everybody, if you would, to please stand. We're going to listen to the, the national anthem. Definitely uh, we'll remember them as, as you have fun uh, tomorrow. Maybe you do something with your family. Uh, but I, I pray that it will still also be a, a time that you remember as well. So uh, John uh, 15, verse 13, very familiar passage probably to many of you. It says, Greater love has no one than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. Um, we know that uh, Christ gave his, his life for, for not just our country but he gave his life for the entire world and we we as uh, followers of Christ we celebrate with him that, that he gave the ultimate price for us but we're also thankful at this time to, to remember those who have given their life for our country as well so. Well, thank you, Mr. Robbie, and thank you, everybody. Um, thank you for those who have served as well and gave up their life. So we'll go ahead and continue worshiping.
Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just come before your throne. Lord, we know, we recognize that your name is powerful. Your name is wonderful, Lord, and you are above all gods. Lord, I pray that uh, as we uh, dive into your word in these next few moments, Lord, that, that your truth will speak to us, but also, Lord, uh, your attitude to how we are to respond and to uh, address the, the uh, issue that we're going to look at today. Uh, Lord, we love you. You are so good. And we're thankful to be here, uh, gathered together in your name to worship this morning. Um, thank you for what you've done and how you've moved uh, your Holy Spirit through the, uh, the music this morning. And uh, you've just uh, opened us up so that we can hear from your word this morning. I pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. All God's people said? Amen. All right. You can have a seat. Thank you. Um, Real quick before I get started, I just want a, a couple of announcements. Remember, there's no evening uh, Genesis Bible study tonight. Uh, take that time off, spend it with your families, do something uh, with uh, with them, and make that memorable. And uh, don't forget the other things this week. We have the big schools out bash. It's your opportunity to throw water balloons at the church staff and and others, and that's awesome. You know, so we're gonna have a good time. It's for the whole church, not just uh, the children, the students, but it's for adults. Uh, if adults, if you'd like to bring a dessert with you, that'd be awesome. If you don't want to, that's fine. You can eat other people's desserts, and we'll stare at you. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, it's all good. So, hey, no, it's all good. But just, just have fun with that. But uh, we'll be here Wednesday from about six to seven thirty. There'll be the inflatables out there uh, for the kids to enjoy, and we'll, the adults will just sit around and and talk about how good of a job you did raising your kids and getting them through that school year as well too. So, and uh, have a good old time with that. So, uh, and then also. Don't forget, next Sunday night, we're going to start, uh, we're going to take a break from our Genesis Bible study during the months of June and July, and we're going to start a tactics class. What, what is tactics? Well, have you ever wanted to have a conversation with somebody about your faith, but you really didn't know how to do it, or maybe you talked to somebody and you found out they were of a different faith or worldview, and you have no idea what that worldview is. You know, maybe they say, well, I'm Wiccan, or I'm Islam, uh, I'm a Muslim, or I'm, you know, and the, they're saying stuff, and you're like, okay, <laughs> you know, uh, this class tactics will kind of teach you how you can use questions and other uh, just conversation to dialogue with people about the gospel and really kind of find out what they believe uh, without going to school and you know going getting all this information and, and study you can so we'll be doing that for six weeks during the summer so i just i want to encourage you we'll we will kind of take a break from being in the sanctuary we'll do it probably in the multi-purpose room we'll have some tables up so you can if you want to bring some water y'all want to bring something to drink or so let if you want to bring some something sweet <laughs> to enjoy while we're going through that it, it's a video series we'll watch probably about a 15 minute video and then we're going to break it down talk about it and then we'll actually have maybe a few times we'll do some kind of uh, role playing we'll kind of do some practice it'll be kind of fun so i just want to encourage you if if that's where your heart's at man i, I want to talk to people about the gospel and about my faith and what it means to me uh look, take advantage of this tactics class that we'll be doing uh, starting next sunday night at uh, six so all right well uh, today we're we're wrapping up a um series in the month of May uh, we called it because you asked and uh, about if you're new about two months ago we put out a, a suggestion box and we said okay what are some topics what are some uh, questions you have about the Bible or something the Bible relates to culture with and and you guys did awesome you, you gave some great questions we we kind of got together as a church council and we kind of looked at okay me, these are the top five and so we picked those and we've gone through those each Sunday morning in May and um, I will get to several of the others probably throughout the rest of the year I, I, we couldn't do everything there was just so many good questions uh, but we will get to those eventually and uh, we'll probably do this again in a couple of years so after I've forgotten about how crazy fun it was <laughs> so it's, it's been a lot of research been a lot of work but it, it's been good uh, I, I've learned a lot through this process so we, we've talked about 
you know, things relating to sin, things relating to salvation. Uh, we looked at what does the Bible say about social justice. Uh, last week, we, we talked about does the Bible promote slavery and, and is it you know, biased and sexist against women. So uh, if you miss those, I encourage you to go back on our website, look those up, and, and you can watch them there. But today, <laughs> you can see the, the title up there. Today, uh, we're going to look at the most um, requested topic uh, by far. And, and I, I almost I knew this was going to be the case, too. Um, the, the topic that you asked the most about as a congregation was, what about homosexuality? What about transgenderism? And so we're going to look at that this morning. So if, if you if you were here this morning and you're like, whoa, I didn't know you were going to do this. If you want to sneak out now, that's fine too. I, I totally understand. But uh, I'm not going to shy away from the topic because it's, we're going to talk about what God's Word says. Um, we're going to do it in love. We're going to do it in grace. But we're going to talk about what God's Word says about it. Um, I, I, you know, like my parents told me, I'd rather you hear about it here in church than out in the world. <laughs> you know, exactly. So we're going we're gonna to look at the topic of, of homosexuality uh, this morning. Um, and I guess before we start, too, I, I want to caution you on this topic, too, real quick before I get started. Watch, watch your amens this morning. I may, I may say something that you like, oh yeah, I, you know, and you just want to let it. Um, but keep in mind that there may be somebody that's here this morning that, that may be struggling with this issue. And, and maybe the way we respond in all truth, maybe that might affect somebody this morning. Because truth is truth, and I'm going to preach truth. But just, just, I just want to lay that out to you. Just, just. Just keep that in mind. Uh, there are people, and sometimes how we respond is, is almost as much as important as, as what we say as well, too. So let's, let's keep that in mind this morning as, as we start. Um, you know, um, there were a lot of, of questions that you asked. There were probably, we're going to look at many of them this morning, uh, a lot of them that you asked when you put in the box, uh, different things. Uh, you know, and I just, I guess here's the place to start when it comes to this. Um, if, if somebody asks you a question and says, for example, you know, can you be gay and you be a Christian? I think the very first place you need to start is, is you need to define terms. I hope, I hope you're understanding this as we've gone through the, uh, the number of weeks now is, okay, when these topics come up, what do, you, what do you mean by social justice? What do you mean by gay? And so that's the very first place we need to understand. We need to start is we need to look at definitions because I may use a word that somebody else may use a word and it means completely the diff a, a completely different thing. And so and we're going to look at that. You know, for example, um, you know, when you say, what does it mean? What do you mean by gay? Well, if you mean by gay that, that uh, you have a sexual you know, if you mean by gay that your sexual orientation, which is typically understood as is just an attraction, perhaps to somebody else of the same sex, and it's more permanent in the sense, you know, can you have a same sex attraction to somebody and be a Christian? Yes, I, I think the Bible's clear on that. Uh, but if you mean, can you be gay? in the sense that you actually, um, you have sexual behaviors that you involve yourself in and that you participate in and be a Christian. Well, I think that's where we need to look at the scriptures a little bit closer and we need to say, okay, what does the Bible say about this? So that's what we're going to do this morning. Uh, but even to defining terms, we have to look at the word Christian. Again, like we, we talked about two weeks ago, if somebody says they're a Christian, that could be, you know, the, the, somebody says, I'm a Christian, that means that maybe their parents are Christians and they raised them in that religion. That's what they think it means to be a Christian. Or somebody says, well, I'm a Christian because I, I attend a Christian denomination or church. But for many of us, we understand that to be a Christian is in the orthodox sense, it's someone who has placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, repented of their sins, and is attempting to follow Christ as Lord. So, you know, again, so when, when these topics comes up uh, at your workplace, at school, students, wherever, uh, 
always start defining terms. Okay, what do you mean by this? What do you mean by this? You know, and, and that's, that's an important distinction that I think we need to, to make there. So before we get into the questions, I, I feel like I have to say, okay, why talk about this? Why, why are you talking about this, Pastor John? Well, number one, you asked for it. So, so but, but, <laughs> but, you know, anyway, um, I'm doing what, yeah. So, this, there's several things I just want to, I want to give you some thoughts here to consider, okay? Uh, homosexual, let me, let me just say this. Homosexuality and other sexual sins are not the worst sins, Okay? understand that. I, I have studied the scriptures. I believe that. I believe there are other sins that are worse than homosexuality. Uh, I, I think probably the largest one is idolatry. Not worse than following the Lord. Okay? Um, but at the same time, it is a big deal. It is an important distinction. You know, Paul makes a point in Corinthians to say that, you know, there's a difference between some sexual sins and other sins. He says that all sins that you sin sexually are committed against your own body. There's a, there's a difference there that Paul kind of makes that decision. So there's an important distinction there. Um, you know, here's here's a couple of thoughts too. The reality is that this discussion of homosexuality, transgenderism, it is the issue of our day. Okay, there are there are issues that have been dealt with in the past. Um, you know, it wasn't the six years ago that the Obergefell decision in the Supreme Court uh, legalized same-sex marriage. This, and it was a debated topic before that, and it's still debated, okay? Just because something's legal doesn't mean it's morally right. I know you understand that, and you, you see that. But this is the, the topic of the day. And, and some people say, well, you shouldn't talk about that. Well, again, if, if we know something, if we've been given truth, and we've been given information, and we don't share it. What does that What does that say about us? You know, I, to use the old example, it's like you know the bridge is out on the road, and you see a car drive by, and it's foggy, and you don't try to stop that car. You know that there's some responsibility I believe that we have when we know we understand what God's word teaches for us to speak up. Yes, it will cost you something. It will indeed cost you something when you speak up on this issue, for sure. Um, uh, let me. Uh, David Kinneman, who is the president of Barna Research uh, Company, he he wrote a book called Unchristian, and it basically was a book where he kind of talked about the things that the world looks at as far as us Christians and how it affects their influence of the gospel. He, he says this about homosexuality. Let, let me read this to you. And I think we have it on the screen there. He says that uh, outsiders say our hostility towards gays, not just the opposition to homosexual politics and behaviors, but disdain for gay individuals has become virtually synonymous with the Christian faith. In other words, he says, according to research, if you say, I'm a Bible-believing Christian, you might as well say, by the way, I hate gays. Now, some of you are like, what? No way. That is the perception. There's a difference here. That's the perception of the lost and the, the LGBT and the trans community. That's their perception. Now, whether you say, no, that's not true of me. That's not true of my family. That's not true of my church. I, I know you guys. I look at you. I know you, you know. But that is their perception. Now, we have to teach them. We have to show them that, okay, well, your perception is a perception. But here's the reality, okay. And so we're going to talk about that this morning here. Um, another, another thing to ask, okay, why are you talking about this, Pastor John? Uh, I think it's important because we have to ask ourselves this question. We, say, we have to say, is this a gospel issue? What do I mean by that? What is, what is a gospel issue? A gospel issue is, is a, something, a topic that we, we believe that, man, if, if we don't get this issue right, then it affects your eternal life. It affects whether or not you are truly in Christ or not. And, and so that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to dig in. You know, the, what, what view of creation you hold 
is not a gospel issue. <laughs> what, what view of how Jesus is going to come back, whether you're pre, post, mid, or ah, uh, <laughs> tribulation, whatever, that is not a gospel issue. Okay, that's different thoughts, and we can have good, great discussions on those things. But there are some issues that, man, we hold fast to. We say, this is what God's Word says, and it kind of talks about this is related to your eternal life. So, is this issue of homosexuality a gospel issue? And I'm going to tell you, yes, it is. It is indeed a gospel issue. And we're going to look at the scriptures that, that show this too, okay? Um, and if, if something is a gospel issue, if it is so important that it would affect your eternal life or my eternal life or the life, the eternal life, the eternal destiny of someone who identifies as the LGBT or trans community, then, then we need to understand it. We need to deal with it, and we need to be able to dialogue and to talk about it. So, so saying all that, <laughs> okay, why are we doing this? Yeah, well, he, well, that's why, okay, because this is a gospel issue. This is a truth issue. This is important, and, and we want to do it. We want to do right by it. So let's, let's get into it. Um, uh, another thing here before we get into the questions, I, I will, all the, the research I have done, all the books I have read, I, I've read probably over a dozen books on this issue, um, and I've, I've also read books from the other side. I, I've read uh, people like Matthew Vines, Justin Lee, who are uh, pro-LGBTQ people, and I've read their case. I, I, I know what they say, and I've read both sides of that. Um, the research that's done has shown that, that most people who become affirming or accepting that, that homosexuality is okay or it's not sinful, uh, the, the number one reason they do that is raised right here. Uh, in research it says that they often know a family member, a friend, or a co-worker who identifies as part of the LGBT and trans community. And that relationship with that person sways their decision to, to believe it or not. not. Not based on what God's word might say about it. Not based on scientific evidence or facts. Just that relationship. Aren't, you know, relationships are powerful, aren't they? I mean, they really are. They, they get to the point where they can sway our minds on issues that I believe are pretty clear, okay? Um, and, and so, you know, for many people, uh, you know, it, it's, in, it's, it's in my family. I, I, we have people that are, are that way because they know someone, they have a friend or a family member. And, and that is the biggest reason why people find support of that is because they know somebody, not, not because of what scripture teaches or anything like that. So, but with all that said, let's, let's get into it. You know, so what does the Bible say about homosexuality, transgenderism? And I think you really, to do this, you have to start at the beginning. You have to go to Genesis. You've got to go to the very beginning because Genesis sets it up for the rest of scripture. Everybody, uh, all the writers of the, the Old Testament and the New Testament point back to Genesis. And, and if you go, if you've got your Bibles there, go to Genesis chapter 1 and go to Genesis 26 and 27. Uh, chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. We read here that, that first off, that um, gender and marriage are found in creation, okay? Look at uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Uh, it says this, it says, then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the livestock, and all over the earth, and all over the creatures that move on the ground. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. He created them, male and female. He created them. Right there, that, that shows that God created two genders, male and female. He, he put them together. And if you go to the next chapter 2, and you look at uh, the verses there, you will see uh, chapter 2, verses 20 through 25, God took these two genders, and he intended for them to be in a relationship, in a marriage relationship. Starting in verse 20 of, of Genesis chapter 2. 
So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds of the air, and all the beasts of the field. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into the deep sleep. While he was sleeping, he took out one of the man's ribs, closed it up to the place for the flesh. Then the Lord God made the woman from the rib he had taken out of the man. He brought her to the man, and the man said, This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. And then Moses puts this in here. He says, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife, and they, they will become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. So from this very beginning here in creation we see that the purpose that God created people was was for male and female to be gendered but also to be in a marriage relationship and then the two would become one flesh and you, that is the natural order everything kind of points back to that all the passages we're going to look at next here in the Old Testament and the New Testament we'll, we'll kind of see that connection um, many of you we're not going to spend much time on this but but Genesis chapter 19 is the story of, of Sodom and Gomorrah I've, I've done as we've gone through Genesis on Sunday nights we, we looked at that and uh, if you want to get into the details of that I'll be glad to give you some thoughts and notes on that sometime but just making a point there that you know in Genesis 19 you know God really Probably in no other place in the Old Testament, God severely judged and punished these two twin cities of Sodom and Gomorrah for their wickedness. And I, and I understand when it, when it comes to this debate, again, I, I've read all the, the books. I know what, well, the, the LGBT side says, well, it wasn't for that reason that God punished them. It was, uh, they'll, they'll quote Ezekiel and say, well, it says there that they were inhospitable. Well, and it says a bunch of other things as well, too. And then the New Testament also points back and talks about uh, Genesis 19. There, there's plenty of evidence, you know, and, and there, there's plenty of other scriptures that we don't have to hang our case as believers on Genesis 19. That's, that is not the only passage that we're going to look at, you know, we look at today. But that is one kind of a notable passage there that people look at. Um, the next passages you come to when you come to the Bible that are probably ones that stick out are the two passages that are in Leviticus 18 and Leviticus chapter 20. I want to read these to you. Leviticus 18, uh, verse 22, it says, Do not lie with a man as one lies with a woman. That is detestable. Uh, this is the holiness code here and in Leviticus 18 through 25. There's a bunch of, of uh, passages there. Uh, if you go to Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13, again, it says, If a man lies with a man as one lies with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. They must be put to death. Their blood will be on their own head, heads. Uh, and again, I, I know the arguments that are, that are talked about and said here. Uh, people will say, wait a minute, that's the Old Testament. That's the Old Testament, and we're in the New Testament time now. And they'll say things, and well, they'll say things like, well, wait a minute, you just pick and choose. Uh, you just pick and choose what you want out of the Old Testament, and then you do the other. You see the, uh, the famous picture there. This is from the, the show The West Wing. How many of you have watched that show, or used to, or it's, it's an older show? But the, the president there, Martin Sheen, I don't know his real name, he has this classic interview with a kind of a conservative Christian uh, talk show host. And he's got all these people around him, and uh, she's trying to tell him, hey, you need to be more conservative, go back to the Bible. So he says, wait a minute. And there's this famous scene there, you can Google it if you'd like on your own time. And he, he says this basically, so wait, a minute, wait a minute, you Christians, you just, you pick and choose what you want out of the Old Testament. And he starts naming off a bunch of things like, you know, what about the uh, Washington Redskins? They, they, uh, do they have to pray and ask God if they can touch the skin of a pig when they play football on Sundays? Or he says, I have a staff member that likes to work on, on the Sabbath. Should we go have him killed? And, and so he makes all these different connections. And, he, and then he tries to relate it to the, the, the issue of homosexuality. And then he points to this Christian conservative talk show host. He says, you just pick and choose what you want out of the Old Testament 
and you take that and you leave what you don't want. And that's a big argument that a lot of people do. But here's the, here's the thing. If somebody says that to you or somebody you say, you just pick and choose. Here's what you need to do. You say, yep, you're exactly right. We do pick and choose. <laughs> and But guess what? And you pick and choose too. You pick and choose what, what's right for you. But, but the difference between how I pick and choose and how you pick and choose is, is very different. I pick and choose because of what the Bible teaches and carries over into the New Testament. Yes, the Old Testament covenant is gone and we don't, we don't live in Israel. We don't have to follow the laws of the nation of Israel. That covenant was broken. Yes, we don't have to follow the sacrificial laws because there's not a sacrificial system anymore. But there are eternal laws. There are moral laws that are passed forward into the New Testament. And see, I understand that. And that's why, yes, I do pick and choose because God speaks on those things. But you, you pick and choose just whatever works for you. Well, I like this, so I'll take this off. You know? And so there's, there's, there's a response to that. And I don't know, that's probably one of the most popular objections to this issue is, well, you just pick and choose. But there's, there's a great response, and you just think through that. You understand, yes, we do pick and choose, but we pick and choose according to what God continues to bring over into the Old Testament there. So that is important. So we kind of move through these. Some people will say, well, the, the Old Testament, it's only in the Old Testament, and it doesn't really talk about this issue in the New Testament. Well, first off, that's wrong. It does talk about it in the New Testament. We're going to look at these passages in depth this morning. Um, but they will say stuff like this. Wait a minute, you know. Um, and they'll say the Old Testament, the, the Leviticus, we don't have to follow that anymore. Well, when the New Testament carries over Yes, we do. You know, uh, all the Ten Commandments, except for one, the, the Sabbath, Jesus reaffirmed in his, his, les his message, his life. Um, so we're going to look at that. But now we kind of go into the New Testament here, uh, look at some things here. You know, Jesus talked about in Matthew 19, he says that, uh, you know, basically kind of summing up, let me go there. If you'll turn to Matthew chapter 19. Jesus was being questioned and asked about divorce. And he, he kept saying, you know, because the, the debate of the day was between the Hillite and the Shemite Jews, and should we be able to divorce for any cause or just unfaithfulness? But Jesus, he kind of refused to, to get into that issue. He says, it is written. He, he goes back again to the, to the scriptures in Genesis and says, hey, this is where it's at. Have you not heard? And he, he begins to quote Genesis here. And he basically, to sum up that, he says, you know, hey, from the very beginning, it's supposed to be that one man with one woman for one life. That's what God's ideal was. And get, Jesus kind of set that precedent up there. Um, let me I tell you what, for time's sake, let's just go to Romans chapter 1. We'll kind of start right there. We get into two passages that are really key for um, this issue. The first is in Romans 1. Um, the Apostle Paul mentions it in a couple of different places, but uh, probably the most pronounced place here is in Romans chapter 1. Uh, let me read to you, uh, starting in verse 26 and 27. All right, let me back up to verse 21. It says, for all, know th uh, for although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like the immortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity, to the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the created things rather than the creator who is forever to be praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were flamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. So I want to walk through these, these verses with you. You see on the screen there, I've kind of underlined and highlighted some key words because, again, I know the arguments that, that is said here, the, probably one of the bigger arguments is, well, wait a minute, 
the most common type of homosexuality in the Roman world was what we would call pederasty. It was where there was a, a Roman master who had a slave boy who was probably prepubescent, anywhere from the age of 12 to 17, that he would have relations with. And we're like, whoa. And so the, the objection is, the Bible is not condemning all homosexuality. It's only condemning that kind of homose homosexuality, this pederasty that was done, because it was the most pervasive in the first century time, in the Roman time. Uh, we're going to look at scripture, and I'm going to tell you why that's not the case, uh, for several reasons. But that's one of the arguments they will use. They'll say, wait a minute, that's, you know, he's only condemning this abusive and exploitive type of homosexuality. Well, there were other types there uh, as well. This was the most common one, which is, is true. But we're going to look at some different things here real quick. Let me just kind of walk you through that. Um, Again, this, this goes back to Genesis. There's some creator where this passage before that, you know, he talks about they, they forsook worshiping the creator and started worshiping creation. You know, right, the, the, the verses we read right before 26 and 27 talk about creation again. So Paul's kind of connecting all this with the natural order here. But look at some of these things. Okay, on your on your screen there, you see a couple different words on the line. Number one there, it says, women exchange natural relations for unnatural ones here. Well, here's something we can say, well, it probably wasn't the pederasty because there was no female equivalent of pederasty in the Roman times. This is just specifically talking about women having unnatural relationships. So th this really doesn't equate with that master-slave sexuality that, that some people will say, that's what it's talking about. So the next thing you kind of look at here is then it says that the men, it mentions the men second, it says they were inflamed for lust with one another. So, so right there, there's kind of a two-way of, of, I guess, describing the relationship. It was two men. First of all, there, Paul didn't use the word for boy there. It was two men. And they were inflamed for lust with one another. There was no abusive or exploitive type of homosexuality being described there by Paul. So I think you have to really look at these verses in depth and to be able to say, yeah, that's probably not what he's talking about. Some of the people like uh, Matthew Vines, Justin Lee, who are pro-gay and they try to use the Bible to show that it's okay, they will make a big deal out of that word natural right there and uh, underlined this says they're the ladies. The women exchange natural relations for unnatural ones and then the men again They'll try to say, well, that natural, that means that it's natural to them. So maybe you're heterosexual, and that's natural to you, but for us as homosexuals, we're, we're naturally this way. That's our orientation. But that really doesn't work again if you look at the scripture there, because if they exchange their natural relations for unnatural ones that were against them, see how that doesn't work when it gets to the scripture? So there's a lot in there for time's sake. We're going to kind of move on there. But those are some points. So the next passage is in Romans, excuse me, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You know, we got to listen fast again, like last week. <laughs> so, uh, Roman, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Let me just read this to you. It says, Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexual immoral, nor the idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanders, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were, but you were washed, and you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. So right there, there's a lot of things we look at too. Number one, again, homosexuality is not the only issue in this passage. There are multiple issues there. So sometimes you say, well, you're just making a big deal out of this issue. There's, there's a bunch of other issues in there. Uh, you know, any kind of sexual issues outside of a loving marriage relationship are wrong, whether it's adultery or anything else. That's all wrong. And we see the list here. It's, Paul is not just singling out one passage here in this passage. So a couple things I want to point out about this verse. You know, he starts out, number one, he says, do not be deceived. 
That's what the devil loves to do. He loves to try to make things look good that are not good. That's, that's his whole purpose. And Paul says, don't be deceived, okay? Uh, with this passage, there's a big debate over a word that Paul used. Uh, go ahead, Ashley, and go to the next passage there. Uh, actually, after this. I'm sorry, after the scripture there. Um, keep going. One more. There you go. Is that, yeah. Okay, yeah. There's, there's a word in here that Paul, uh, many biblical scholars think that he was actually the first one to coin and use this term. It's the word arsenikote in Greek, and then he uses the word malikos, which has been around there. But those two words there in, in verse 9 of this passage have caused a lot of debate with people. Uh, the word arsenikote there it doesn't show up in any literature until we get to the scripture right here. This is the first time it's used. And people will say, wait a minute, what does Paul mean by that word, arsenicote? Does it really mean this? And that, and, and there's this whole debate. I'll just quickly tell you the, the really the fastest thing with this word. Both those words, it's, it's kind of like a combination where you see there are sino, meaning men, and kote, meaning to bed. So if you put the word together, it it's means men who bed men. Okay, that's what the word means. And so the, the debate, what does that mean? Is, is it just talking about the pederasty and, and this exploitive type of homosexuality? Well, those two words, uh, are sino and kote, when the, when the Old Testament was translated in Greek, which is called the Septuagint, when they translated the Septuagint, uh, the two words there, arseno and kotai, were used in Leviticus 18 and Leviticus 20, which we just read, to describe homosexuality. So, you know, Paul being a Jewish scholar who knew the Old Testament scriptures, he probably takes those words, combines them together to say, hey, this is, God is saying all homosexuality. This is, in all cases, is wrong. You know, it doesn't matter if it's this type or this kind or this kind. It's, it's all wrong. That's probably the biggest kind of explanation. Just kind of speed through that real quick. Um, there are other passages in the Bible you know, that, that talk about different things. There's the word porneia in Greek, uh, which in English is the sexual immorality. Uh, the, the Bible just doesn't have these five or six passages and, and discuss the issue of sexuality there. there. There are more to it. These are the big ones that really kind of speak to it. In fact, the, the, those on the other side will say, well, you just use the clobber passages. That they've been nicknamed the clobber passages because they're so clear in what they teach and what they say. Uh, but, there, but the Bible is, is full of different things like that. So, okay. So some of your questions real quick as we kind of wrap up this morning. Uh, you know, you, again, somebody put the question in there, is, is being gay a sin? Again, it depends on what you mean by gay. Do you mean by gay someone who has a temptation to look and to, to desire someone of the same sex? Can, is that a sin? Well, it depends on, again, what, what do you do with that? Is that is it a lustful thought that you give into? Is that something? Or when you mean gay, do you mean someone who's living an actual active homosexual lifestyle? I, I think if you look at 1 Corinthians 6 and some of these other passages, then I'd say, yes, that is. But, it, but it's not sinful if you're just tempted to have a thought or something. Just like for a heterosexual person. You know, if a thought enters your mind, is that a sin if you don't do anything with it? No, it's not. You, you shut that down, you start praying. All right, Lord. Uh, s same thing with homosexuality there. Um, another question you asked was, do LGBTQ people go to heaven? Again, de defining terms here. Uh, I, I fully recognize and understand that many today in the LGBT and, and trans community identify themselves as that. They say, I am gay, I am lesbian, whatever. And, and they will identify with that. But if those people never act on those inclinations, you know, I think that's something that you have to look at. You know, it's, it's not so cut and dry as maybe we perhaps want it to be. So you've got to, again, define those terms. Uh, you know, is, if someone, again, is fully immersed and, and living and and, and doing things that the Bible specifically describes as sinful behavior, then yes. But if, if it's just a, a question about 
do I identify as this? You know, we can we can talk about that. Should we identify like that or not? You know, I think we need to identify first and foremost with Christ and Him alone. But um, so that's another question. Number three, you asked, you know, can a person live in homosexuality and be saved? Uh, after what we've looked at, just real briefly this morning, real quickly, I believe that if someone's living in actual unrepentant sin and, and they continue in that then I think according to 1 Corinthians 6 9 that that's that is not possible for someone to not be convicted and not be um, you know affected by the Holy Spirit's conviction in their life that you know I'm just gonna live like I want to live I'm gonna do it I don't care what God's Word says I would question okay is that person really saved because they're not showing a desire to follow after Christ and his teaching. So, you know, that's look at. So, well, this is what I really want to get to most of all here with you to say is, is this. Okay, I think probably most of you in here were like, okay, I understand that, Pastor John. I, I know this. You're not telling me anything new. But here's, here's where I really want to end uh, with you this, this morning. How, how should we respond to the LGBT, the trans community. This is really important. I just want to give you some basic real quick points. Number one, to think about uh, Ephesians 4.15 says that we need to speak the truth in love. You know, For many of us, maybe we love truth. We love truth so much that we want to take it and we want to beat people over the head with it. But that's not doing it in love. That's, that's not the way to do it. That's not the way to go about showing our brother in Christ or someone else that, that God loves them. You know, we, we have to do both. And it is possible to do both. You can give people truth and you can do it in love. Um, that, that's so important there. Um, secondly, ask, ask yourself, who am I talking to? When you're having this conversation with whoever it might be, maybe it's a family member, co-worker, student at school, who am I talking with? Are, do they identify as a Christian are they are they a follower of Christ or not are they lost that who they are and, and who they if they have Christ or not that should determine how we respond to people uh, you know if someone outside of Christ and they don't have a relationship with Christ this is probably not the first issue that we need to talk with them about the first thing they need to hear is the gospel and that God loves them and that he died for them and if they will choose to accept his gift of forgiveness on the cross, then they too can have eternal life. That, that is the most important issue. Uh, you know, if you've got somebody at your workplace that's not a Christian, but this is, you know, I would say, yeah, I really don't want to talk about it with you. I'd rather talk to you about this instead. And I would move the conversation to a gospel conversation. That, you know, but if someone says, yeah, I'm a believer and I think this is okay, then I think that's when you can take out your Bible. That's when you can take out your notes. You can read some books, and you can say, "Well, let's let's really see what God's Word does say about it, because this is an important issue, and it looks like that this might actually be a gospel issue, and that we need to consider it." So that's who you're talking to is important. Okay, number three, pray for them. Pray for yourself. You know, if, if someone that you know and you have a relationship with, this is an issue for them. Uh, are you praying for them? Or, you, or you, do you just get mad and upset with them because they don't think like you think and they don't believe like you believe? Pray for them. Ask God to open their eyes to, to see his truth and to understand that. Um, pray for yourself too. Say, God, how can I impact them? How, you know, give me the right words to say uh, to that person. Uh, number four, you might say, Ask them, hey, can I have a conversation with you about this? You need, to, we need to ask permission <laughs> sometimes to talk to people. Sometimes we come up and we say, I'm, let me tell you about this, and and we just, and people aren't ready for it, and that will turn them away. We we can give them truth, but if we're really gonna dig into that relationship with them, we need to say, hey, can I? You know, this is a really, I think it's an important issue. You can you can blame me. Our pastor talked about this on Sunday morning. Do you mind if I share a couple things with you and, and talk about it? But you need to ask permission. Hey, can we get together and have coffee or, or breakfast and we talk about this? 
and, and ask that permission because then they're saying, okay, yeah, share with me what you know, what you found, what you believe about this because I want to know. Uh, if many people have already made up their minds, they're like, yep, I don't want to hear it. That's fine. You don't, don't waste your time with them. If, they, if they're, be quiet, leave me alone. Just pray for them. Don't, don't try to blow past them and, because then you'll offend them even more and then you'll push them away even more than that. And then, then finally, uh, line number five is, is share some resources with them. Um, on the back, as you go out the door today, I want to encourage you, uh, I put a, a sheet there with some resources for you to consider. Uh, there, there's some great resources. There's um, different people in there. Every single, the, every single one of the resources I, I left, there's a, a stack of papers back there on that little stool by the door. Just grab that with you. There are YouTube videos that you can look at. Uh, these are people like Preston Sprinkle, Sean McDowell, uh, people that are very gracious. They're never going to have a video that's going to blast people. And it's like, you sinners, you're going to hell, blah, blah, blah. It's nothing like that. These people are gracious, loving people. Uh, there are books there that you can check out and read. Uh, but I just want to give you that. If this is something, this is an issue that you're really wanting to dig in a little bit more. We just barely scratched the surface, and I'm already 10 minutes over on my time with you this morning. But let's, let's close um, this morning. You know, again, I, some questions here. I, I don't know where you're at this morning. Um, is there somebody that, that, that needs to hear about this this morning? Is there somebody that you can pray for? Is there somebody that, that you need to have a conversation with? And I just want to encourage you to do that. Or, or maybe you're here this morning, and you've been all truth but no love. And you feel like, man, that's just, this is so wrong. You know, pray for yourself. Say, God, give me a love for the LGBT community, for the trans community. You don't have to agree with them to love them. You can love people. You can show love to people and show the love of Christ to them. And maybe that's an issue where you're at this morning. Maybe you need to be more compassionate because it's the love of Christ that leads us to repentance. That's what Scripture tells us. And then, again, I don't know where you're at this morning. This is a little bit of a different topic, a little bit different subject as far as sermons go. Um, but, but have you come to realize your, you know, your identity is not found in your sexuality or your race or anything else, but your identity as a Christian is in Jesus Christ and Him alone. And are you this morning? Have you have you realized that? Are there? Are you here this morning? And you're checking out what Christianity is. You're trying to see who this Jesus was and what He said and what He did. Uh, are you at the place where you're ready to receive him into your life? Are you here this morning and you can say, I want Christ to come in my life. I want my identity to be found in him. If that's you, if you're ready this morning, I, I want to help you by just offering a, a sinner's prayer that you can pray. It's not the prayer that you know means something. It's, it's your heart condition. It's what your desire is to come into a relationship with Christ. If, if you'll just close your eyes and bow your heads and nobody looking around or getting up, if, if you'd like to, to invite Christ to come into your life, uh, you can do that through a, a simple prayer. Just pouring your heart out to the Lord. Say, Dear God, I know you love me and I know you died on the cross for my sins. I know that I'm a sinner and I can't go to heaven by my own works. Today, God, I want to ask you into my life Forgive me my sins. Help me to follow you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, this morning, the altar is open. Uh, I apologize for going over, but I, I don't want to rush this. This is a big issue that I think we need to consider. Uh, if you want to come down and pray for yourself, pray for somebody else, you're welcome to do that. Uh, if, you want to, if you feel like Westside is the church that you want to plant your family and your life in, you're welcome to join. Uh, you come down here and we'll walk you through that decision. Our, our staff, our deacons are here to pray with you if you would like them to pray with you. Uh, I'm going to close in prayer and then I'm going to let Rebecca uh, lead us in a time of invitation. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I don't know what you're doing in the lives of, of the people here this morning, uh, those that are maybe watching online. Uh, Lord, if, if we have a wrong attitude, Lord, if we, we have a, an angry spirit against the homosexual community or the trans people, Lord, I pray that, that you'll, you'll help us to, to, to ask forgiveness of that. Give us a heart of love for them. 
because you would do that. Lord, uh, help us, Lord, to understand your word and your truth. And um, we just thank you. This is your time. May your Holy Spirit move in, in, in our lives. And pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. As the offering plate is passed, just remember to take a look at the uh, bulletin there for the, any of the announcements there. I don't want to read them to you, but thank you for coming this morning. Uh, don't forget those resources are back there on the stool if you'd like to know a little bit more about this topic. And again, I would be glad to meet and talk with you as well anytime if you want to dig a little bit deeper. Thank you for coming this morning. Hope you have a great day.